Hey guys, welcome. This is our chapter one study guide. Let's get started and let's have some fun. All right, here we go. Uh, A, D, F are coplanar. Coplanar means they're on the same plane. A, D, F. They actually do exist on this back plane back here, so that is true. Number two, A, C right here and F, E are on the same plane. Well, they're clearly not on the same plane. They're opposite sides from each other, so they are not coplanar. False. A, B, E are on the same plane. They're on this front-facing plane. True. D, A, B, E. D, A, B, E. They all are on this front-facing plane. True. A, C are collinear. Yes, they're on this uh, plane right here, the triangle plane. D, E, B are collinear. D, E, B are collinear. Uh, collinear, we got to be careful, means on the same line. D, E, and B do not have the same line. They're on two separate lines, so that would be false. Okay. Number 7 through 12, we're using this picture here, and we see congruency marks, so those are congruent. Congruency curves, those angles are congruent. Here's another set of congruency marks. So first, B, C is 12, and C, E is 15. So what's the total distance? This is segment addition postulate. We're just going to go ahead and add those two together. And 12 plus 15 is going to give us 27. Next, blank is the angle bisector. Well, for an angle bisector, I have two congruent angles that need to be present because I bisect it. And that's right here and here. So GC is bisecting it. So GC is the segment. And the angle it's bisecting is angle BCA. All right, BC and CD. If we look in the picture, we see that BC and CD are congruent. Um, so they have the congruency marks, so we're going to set those two equal to each other. I'm going to use a separate sheet of paper to show my work. So here we go. 3x plus 2 equals 5x minus 10. Again, they're set equal to each other because of the congruency mark. And subtract, we're going to get 2 equals 2x minus 10, add the 10 over, and we get x equals 6. And we are solving for x, so that's our final answer. Okay. Number 10, AC and CF. If we look for AC and CF, AC and CF, those are also congruent. So we can actually use... Uh, congruency there too, so we can set them equal to each other as well. Okay, subtract, and we get 3x minus 16 equals a negative 4. Add the 16 over, we get a positive 12, and divide by 3, we get x equals 4. That's not our answer, we're supposed to plug it back in to find AF. So we're going to use x equals 4 in the equation. So 5 times 4 minus 16, that's going to be 20 minus 16, which is going to give us the value of 4, which is kind of interesting that we get 4. So if AC is 4, that means CF is equal to it, so it's also 4. And AF is the entire segment length. We're going to do 4 plus 4, and we're going to get 8 as our answer. All right, BCG, BCG is this angle right in here, and GCA is this other angle. They're congruent to each other, so if that's 60, guess what? The other one is also 60. And then BCA is the full angle, so we're going to add those two together and get 120. Now we have ACD is 60, so ACD, I'm going to rewrite ACD real quick, ACD, so that's 60, and then DCH, so H is coming through here, this piece is 20, so I'm trying to find out what HCA is, which is basically this top piece right up in here. 
and what plus 20 would give us 60, and the answer would be 40. So we could do that by taking the full angle, subtracting the smaller angle to get 40 degrees. Okay. This next one, we have 36 is one angle. 7x minus 4 is this other small angle. And then PQRS is the full angle. So algebraically and logically, the intelligent thing to do would be to take little plus little equals big. So we're going to do that 36 plus 7x minus 4 equals 4x plus 47. And we're going to combine like terms to get 7x plus 32 equals 4x plus 47. I'm going to subtract that over and subtract that over at the same time to give us 3x equals 15. And then divide by 3, x will equal 5. And that's not our final answer. We've got to plug it back into PQS, which is right here. So we're going to get 7 times 5 minus 4. Okay, 7 times 5 is going to give us uh, 35. And then we're going to minus 4 and get 31 degrees as our final answer. And that will be for the measure of P, Q, uh, S. All right. A, B, C are collinear. Okay, so, and B is between A and C. So we're going to go ahead and draw a line here. And we have A, B, and C. AB is 4x minus 1, BC is 2x my, uh, plus 1, and then AC is 8x minus 4. So we can see that we're using our angle addition, or sorry, segment addition postulate. So we're going to add the top two and set it equal to the full. Okay, and move this up here. And we're going to get 4 plus 2 is 6x, then negative 1, positive 1 cancel out, and we get 8x minus 4. I'm going to subtract uh, the 6x this way and add the 4 over here, which will end up like that. Okay, and then divide by 2, x will equal 2. And then we got to plug it in to find all the other segments, a, b, b, c, and c, d. So we'll write those out here. AB is going to be 4 times 2 minus 1. That's going to be 8 minus 1, which would give us 7. And then BC is going to be 2 times 2 plus 1. That's going to be 4 plus 1, which is 5. And if I get 7 and 5, you add those together, we should get the length of AC, which is going to be 12. Name the following angles in the diagram for exercise 15 to 19, described by each. Supplementary to NQK. NQK, um, we could use KQP. We could have also used NQJ if the line's going this way or if the line's going that way. Okay? Vertical to QPM. Or sorry, PQM. So PQM is right here. If we go straight across and straight across, I'll put LQN. Congruent to N, N, Q, J. Vertical angles are congruent. We haven't really talked about that yet, but those would be congruent. So K, Q, P would be acceptable. That won't be on the test, though. Adjacent and congruent to J, Q, M. J, Q, M. What would be adjacent to it and congruent? Well, you see how LM is a straight line. <clears throat> this is 90, so this would be 90 over here. And then JQL would have to also be 90 because they have to add it to 180. And then complementary to KQP. KQP is this angle here. The whole thing, though, has to add up to 90, so this would be a 90 as well. So it's going to be the second piece to make it 90. Again, complementary means it's going to add up to 90 degrees. 
So the second angle will be PQM. Okay. And flip it and rip it and grip it. Complementary angles, we have uh, all this information here. In order to do this, we need to draw the picture correctly, XYZ and XYW. Um, they're complementary, so they're going to make a 90. That's going to cut in half there. They both look like they're sharing Y. Uh, so we got X, Y, Z. Oh no, it looks like X is going to be here because they both share that. So I think this is how we want it. So we have X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z is 3X minus 9. And 5X plus 9 is this angle. We're not going to set them equal to each other. They are complementary, which means they add up to 90. So we just have to set them up by adding them and setting it equal to 90 and solving. We end up with 8x, the 9's cancel, and then we go ahead and see what 8 goes into, oh I'm sorry, that's a plus 9, I did make a mistake, that's 18. Double check my numbers, um, sorry about that, plus. Subtract the 18, And I have a calculator off to the side, that's 72, that looks a lot better. Divide by 8, and we get x equals 9. Important, but not the final answer, so we got to plug them back in. So we're going to move over here, and we're going to get 3 times 9 plus 9. And doing that in our calculator, we're going to end up with 48. And then for our second angle, we're going to get 5 times... Uh, 9 plus 9, and that's going to be 45, then plus 9, which is going to give us 54. Right, did I do that right? Let me go check. 3 times 9. I'm sorry, this is 36. I apologize, I typed it in wrong. 36 and 54. Okay, um, good teaching moment here. I had 48 and 54. I knew those did not add up to 90. So I was like, hold up. I made a mistake. So when I plugged it in, I plugged it. I accidentally hit 4 by accident when I did that. Um, so I made a mistake there in calculating it. But here I can see 36 and 54 will add up to give me 90. Um, so it's okay. We corrected it before it was too late. Okay. We have supplementary angles. So we have two angles. Um, A, B, C, and then we have another angle, D, E, F. Now I know they're adding to 180, but I don't know what they're going to look like. So D, E, F is 20 degrees less than three times the measure of A, B, C. So I know what this angle is in terms of this angle, but I don't know what A, B, C is. So I'm going to say A, B, C is X. Okay, so D, E, F, so we get A, B, C is X, whatever, and then over here, we know that DF is 20 degrees less than, less than means we're going to put it at the back, three times the measure of ABC. So three times the measure of whatever ABC is, which we don't know. Now we have two pieces that we can use in terms of one variable. So all I have to do is do X, ABC's angle, plus 3X minus 20, and set it equal to 180. And we do our algebra and we end up with x equaling 50, I believe. And what is the measure of each? Well, that means ABC is going to be 50. And, and then without me having to plug it in, if this is 50, I know this one's going to have to be 130 because these two have to add up to 180. Okay? 22. Woohoo! Uh, <clears throat> SQ bisects RST, RST, SQ, there we go, if it bisects, I'm instantly writing in that they're congruent. Uh, RST, so sorry, QST, QST is 2x plus 18, and RST is 6x minus 2, so they are congruent to each other, so I can set them equal to each other. Let's give myself a little bit more space here. So we got 6x minus 2 equals 2x plus 18. 
and subtract the 2x, we get 4x. Add the 2, we get 20. x equals 5. And then what is rsq? We're going to do 6 times 5 minus 2. And I believe that's going to be 28. 6 times 5 minus 2, just double checking. We get 28 degrees is rsq. Okay? So again, we set them equal to each other and then plug in that 5. Find the distance and the midpoint of the given um, pieces. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do our first thing. Label our points, right? Okay. Next, we can go ahead and actually do some. Here we go. So distance formula is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And let's plug it in. Uh, 6 minus a negative 7. 10 minus a negative 4. So that's going to be 6 plus 7, and then we're going to square that. Two negatives make a positive, so we get 13 squared. And that squared is going to be 169. Over here, we're going to be 10 plus uh, 4, which is 14 squared. I believe that's 196. Yes, that is. I'm just double checking. And we're going to add those two together. And we get 365. And then I'm going to take the square root of 365. And uh, there is no perfect square. It wants me to round to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to get approximately 19.1. Okay, so that's for that one. Now we're going to do the same thing, but use the midpoint formula. Sorry about that. Let's get a new fresh sheet of paper. Midpoint. X1 plus X2 divided by 2. Y1 plus Y2 divided by 2. Okay. And we're going to plug it in, negative 7 plus, what, 6 divided by 2. And we're going to get negative 4 plus 10 divided by 2. So that's going to be negative 1 half. And that's going to be 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Okay? So let's just double check that. I plugged those in correctly. Negative 7 and 6, negative 1 half. Yep. And negative 4 and positive 10, which makes 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay, very good, very good. All right, one second. Okay, um, I'm just showing you the answer to these ones, so double check your answers with me. Um, we just kind of put those in there real quick and just, uh, uh, just to save a little time, but set them up the same way as the other one, okay? All right, last one, number 25, says a map of a suburban uh, city in the suburban shows an airport located at 25, 11. The ambulance is on a straight expressway headed from the airport to, uh, airport to the hospital. Uh, the ambulance gets a flat tire at the midpoint of 8G. As a result, the ambulance calls for a helicopter assistance. So what's the mid, uh, what are the coordinates of point M? Okay, so uh, we're going from the hospital, or sorry, from the... Uh, uh, we're going from the going to the from the airport to the hospital. Sorry about that. It was blah blah blah. So airport to the hospital, and we got to find the midpoint. So we're really just finding the midpoint of A G, and here's A, and here's G. Um, so all we have to really do is just do uh, x one, y one, x two, y two. So we're going to add those twenty five plus one divided by two, and then we're going to get eleven plus 1 divided by 2, and so that's going to give us 26 divided by 2, which is 13, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay? How far does a helicopter have to fly to get from M to G? Assume all coordinates are in miles. Okay, so this is just a distance formula from uh, M to G. So distance formula, we're going to switch uh, M to G. So here's X1, X2. We'll use this as X1, Y1. 
So we're going to do x2 minus x1 squared plus uh, y2 minus y1 squared. This is going to be a negative 12 squared, which is 144. And then this is going to be a negative 5 squared, which is 25. Add those together, and we're going to get 169. Take the square root of that, and I believe we're going to get 13 miles on the dot. Okay? All right, guys. Good luck to you. All right? And uh, let's see here. What should I do? What should I do? Okay. Um, ooh, this will be tricky. All right. Um, write the name of the character on the test. I'm going to do a voice, okay? So try and figure out what voice is from. And I'm really bad at voices, so it's going to be difficult. So here we go. Um, I'm trying to think of the quote. 